Hey everyone, welcome back to The Tune Project. Today we are talking all about how to know when to add slurs in a fiddle tune, so stay tuned. And if you end up enjoying this video and finding it to be helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up below. And if you're not yet subscribed to The Tune Project, I post videos just like this one along with fiddle tutorials each and every week, so consider hitting that red subscribe button below along with the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. If things look a little bit different today, it's because I recently got a new camera thanks to my Patreon supporters. So just wanted to give you that heads up. Hopefully things are looking a little bit crisper. Slurs are an absolute game changer when it comes to fiddle tunes. They can really take a tune from sounding plain and basic to interesting and musically stylistic. For example, if I were to play the beginning of the B section of Arkansas Traveler without slurs, this is what it would sound like. Versus with slurs, where it would sound like this. So I'm sure that you can tell that there's quite a big difference when we add slurs versus having none at all and just playing all of the notes on separate bows. But again, we go back to the question, how do we know when and where to add in those slurs? Well, the type of bowing that I just used for that example with the B part of Arkansas Traveler was called a Georgia Shuffle. And if you're not familiar with that term, I'd recommend checking out my video where I talk all about the Georgia Shuffle and how to play it. But basically, it's three notes that we slur on an up bow followed by one note on a down bow. So that's just one type of bowing that happens to work really well with Arkansas Traveler, but we do have many options to choose from. And really what it all comes down to is the feel and the style that you're after within a particular tune. So let's say it's a faster tune with lots of 16th notes or 8th notes. The Georgia Shuffle could be a great option there because you have a lot of the same type of note in a row where it makes sense to have a consistent bow pattern. However, if you're playing a tune that has a wider variety of rhythms and note values, we want to be a little bit more selective with where we place the slurs. So this this can come down to things like the bow direction that's needed for a particular phrase. And oftentimes in tunes, and this isn't always the case, but oftentimes we want to start on a down bow for the downbeats of phrases. So if you find that, let's say you're playing a particular phrase and you end on a down bow at the end of a phrase where you also need to start on a down bow for the beginning of the next phrase, you might want to consider throwing a slur in there somewhere to make sure that you'll end up on an up bow before the start of the next phrase. And if you happen to be playing a slower tune, again, going back to the style that I mentioned earlier, you want to think about the style and the feel that you're trying to convey when you play the tune. Are you wanting it to be very smooth and connected and legato? And if so, will slurs help you achieve that? And Ashokan Farewell happens to be a great example of a tune where we would want to make sure that our bows are very connected. We have longer bows, it's a slower tune, we're in 3-4 time, so there are places where we can choose to incorporate slurs. So I'll go ahead and do another quick comparison for you so that you can hear what the beginning of Ashokan Farewell sounds like without slurs, and then I'll play it a time through with slurs so that you can compare for yourself. <laughs> not necessarily better than the other, it's just that sometimes slurs make it a little bit easier for us to achieve the style that we're after, and in this case that is very smooth, connected, and flowing phrases. Another thing to consider when deciding where to add slurs within a given tune is simply practicality. We already touched on bow direction and being mindful of which bow you want to start on at the beginning of phrases and how slurs can come in handy with that. But also physically, slurs can sometimes just simply make things so much easier, especially when we are using a specific amount of the bow or when we're playing faster fiddle tunes and just wanna give ourselves a little bit of a break. If we're playing several notes, very quickly all in a row, all on separate bows. Versus slurred. After 
after doing that for so long, your arm will start to get very tired, especially if you're not an experienced fiddle player and haven't necessarily built up that stamina yet you will likely get tired very quickly. And that's where slurs can really come in handy for, again, a practical reason. And that is just to physically make it easier on yourself. So not only stylistically are slurs helpful, but also physically it makes it so much easier on our bodies when we're playing tunes for an extended period of time. So I hope that was helpful and gave you some insight as to where to maybe incorporate slurs into a tune that you're working on. This is a question that I get asked all of the time. How do you know when to add slurs, where to add slurs? And there are really multiple answers to that. So hopefully I was able to answer that well for you all. And I hope you're able to find some places within the tunes that you are working on currently to add slurs for any of the reasons that we talked about today. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy practicing. If you've made it this far, you must have enjoyed the video, so why not check out this one next? Also, if you'd like exclusive content from the Tune Project and a more personalized experience, head over to Patreon and join our wonderful little fiddle community. Your support helps me to continue to grow as a creator and ensures that I'm able to continue to provide free educational content here on YouTube. Thank you.